Hi guys, Good Golf here with a video on Fishnet networking. Today we are going to look at client side prediction, a feature built into the Fishnet networking asset. So let's first answer the question why do I need this client side prediction? The answer is simple. If you don't want your players to be able to cheat by modifying your game, you need some sort of server authoritative movement. Simply put, the client player object movements are replicated on the server and if there's a mismatch, because someone cheated, the client movement is corrected. Client side prediction is the method built into Fishnet networking to do just that. It's more advanced than my two line summary suggests, so if you want to know more, dig into the code and some articles posted on the internet. I added a link explaining the concept in the video description. So what did I do for this video? At first I read Fishnet documentation. There's a guide which explains step by step how to set up an example for client side prediction. I recommend following the steps in that order if you want to understand the concept. Next I created a small script to cheat. When the one key is pressed it moves the client forward outside of the client side prediction code. So let's see if it works. When I run the example code, I can move the capsule character, character controller. I can move it forward and sideways and with the space keys I can make it jump. This is what the basic CSP example supports. Now I press the one key during movement and you see that the client initially jumps forward. However, the correction from the server kicks in and my capsule is put on the right spot in the blink of an eye. This sounds simple and the basic example explains it well. However, if you want to use your own character controller instead of the basic Unity one, you will have to do quite a bit of work to make it compatible. This is explained in the guide and there are examples in the package in case you have a rigid body in your character controller. It's by no means easy. I dabbled with getting Invector to work but with little success so far. It uses coroutines and I suspect these disrupt the flow of the replicate and reconciliate methods. Supposedly KCC is doable to integrate, but it will require a lot of work. If you want a head start on KCC then check the GitLab repo in the video description. What does the high level concept look like? Basically you divert the inputs and character move from the mono behaviors update method to the network managers on tick. This on tick is synchronized across servers and clients. On the client side you first reconcile the character's movement with the data received from the server. Then you gather the movement inputs into the move data and use it to move the character. Using the replicate mechanism this move data is also passed on to the server. The server simulates moving the character using the same move data, then builds the reconcile data containing the character's new position and sends it back to the client using the reconcile mechanism. I know this oversimplifies what's being done behind the scenes, but this is the basic part you will need to use when rewiring your own character controller. Ok, let's give it a try to create a CSP version of the Unity starter assets. I was tipped by Puppet on Discord to look at a GitHub repo which has an example by Richford Games based on an old version of Fish Networking. So I set out to work on creating an updated version of the code. As I show the result in the background you will probably notice it isn't perfect yet. There's some jitter and the turn left and right isn't smoothed out as in the original Unity third person controller script. I do hope this will help you get started on using client side prediction for your own controller and maybe you can improve the code I have uploaded to my GitHub repo. When you press the F2 key to cheat you will only barely notice the player tries to do the cheat move forward before being pushed back to the original position. Ok, so where to begin? Let me walk you through the basic steps first. First we get started with the Unity starter assets. 
create a new URP project since the 2021 starter assets are URP only. Import Unity starter assets, third person character controller. Install the dependencies, restart the editor. After the editor restarts, import the Unity starter assets again. Next, we need to add two key bindings using the Unity input system on which the third person controller is built. Open the starter assets playground scene. Go to the player armature object and find the player input script. Select the starter assets input actions and open it. Add to input actions. Network, bind it to the F1 key. Cheat, bind it to the F2 key. The network key will be used to start fish networking and the cheat key is bound to an updated version of the cheat script. Next, we import fishnet. You can't use the default fishnet networking manager prefab with the network HUD canvas easily, since both fishnet and Unity scripts use the same enable input system, define symbol. It causes fishnet to show a menu based on the old on GUI calls, which is, well, let me not go there. Add the networking prefab manager to the scene, unpack the prefab and remove the HUD object. If an error is thrown stating spawnable prefabs is null, then add default prefab objects to this property. Create an empty get input object and add the following scripts. Player input. This script will activate the input system so we can press the F1 key before the player object is instantiated by Fishnet networking. Network input control. This script binds a method to the network action, which is bound to the F1 key, and searches for a script called start network and calls it. It will also deactivate the get input object assuming the network properly starts and the player gets instantiated. Add the start network script to the network manager. This script will be called when the F1 key is selected. Create a start position and add it to the network manager's player spawner. Add the time manager to the network manager and set physics mode to time manager. Now we need to create a player prefab. We'll make a few changes to the player armature and then create a prefab out of it. Add the network object, network transform, network animator, predicted object, and my player script and cheat script to the prefab. Create a prefab and delete it from the scene. Add it to the network manager's player spawner as the player prefab. Open the prefab and link its geometry child object to the predicted object's graphical object property. Also link the player armature object to the network transform property. The last step is to replace the third person control script with my version named third person control CSP. Make sure you make a few screenshots of the third person control settings with the list properties followed out. This will help you copy it one to one. This should do the trick. Run the project, press the F1 key to start the networking and instantiate the player. Start walking around and jumping. Use the F2 key to try and cheat. As I mentioned before, this isn't a perfect script yet. Take some time to work through the code. And the comments should give you some pointers on how to make CSP work on your own controller. I hope you liked the video and please let me know if you have suggestions to update the script and feel free to ask questions in the video comments. Since I haven't showed yet how Fishnet deals with remote procedure calls, I think I will start working on a video for just that. Thanks for watching and watch this space for more videos.